Hello, Dragonfly Swarm. Uh, so I've seen a lot of people say that Candace is a very average character right now because she has a very small pool of good teams currently. And I do agree. But, 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 allow me to introduce the next installment of my God Duo series with Candace and Singcho. Because I've been doing a lot of testing with the power these two have together, and I genuinely believe I've found one of the most fun and practical synergies that we've seen in a while. And no, it's not just because Candace gives Singcho Hydro Infusion. As nice as that is, I would not waste time making a video just for that. <laughs> so, in today's video, I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about why Candace and Singcho are so amazing together and how best to build them and their teams so that you can beat the sh** out of this difficult new Spiral Abyss era. Before I start though, if this video helps you, you should totally leave a like and hit subscribe to stay updated on my content because it very much helps my channel. Alrighty. Now, Candace, as I said a second ago, has quickly garnered a reputation as a very average 4 star. She's not good, but she's not bad, and that's mostly because her kit is currently very niche, and there aren't a lot of teams at all that desperately want her. Her hydro infusion is very interesting for team comping and her personal damage buffing and enabling are all actually surprisingly nice but it's just that they're not necessary for most teams. But one synergy that a lot of people immediately wanted to try out was one in which Candace turned Singcho into a full on hydro main DPS thanks to her infusion. Which even that hasn't seen too much buzz in the community because for the most part it's just a fun gimmick team for people that really like Singcho and or Candace. But I did a bit of last hope testing myself even after I had come to the conclusion conclusion that Singcho and Candice were just a fun duo, and I found Godhood. Essentially, all of my God Duo videos are my own attempts to explain very broken synergies between two specific characters, but with this God Duo video, I found it wasn't just about how strong Singcho becomes with Candice in the party, it was also about the insane enabling that these two can do together for an entire archetype of teams, some of which teams are the most budget-friendly and powerful team styles in the game currently. And no, that is not a sugarcoat, Candice has found her way into these teams thanks to Singcho. But how? What exactly makes these two so strong together. Well, to start, Candace does provide Singcho with Hydro Infusion, which allows him to play as a full-on Hydro DPS on the field, and he'll end up dealing a pretty decent amount of extra personal damage, especially if you factor in his C2, which shreds Hydro Resistance anytime his burst hits enemies. Thus, now he has yet another form of very high Hydro damage that benefits from his Shred and his 4th Ascension passive, making him especially valuable with this Infusion buff, but to take that a step further, Candace is also buffing his normal attack damage with her 4th Ascension passive, making it an actually decent investment if you choose to go down the route of a main DPS Singcho. Not that it's optimal, but the option is there. Additionally in 3.0, Hydro Resonance was changed to grant the entire party a 25% HP bonus, which is very valuable for Candace's buffing and damage, and quite valuable for Singcho's healing. But as I'll discuss later, there are some very interesting ways of even further leveraging this Hydro Resonance bonus for some of the stronger teams that Candace and Singcho fit into. For example, a double Hydro Hyperbloom team with Candace, Kuki, and Singcho allows all three of them to benefit greatly from survivability increases whilst also allowing Kuki and Candace to build entirely into their respective offensive roles. Meaning they're building entirely offensively and yet will still become capable of providing good survivability to an otherwise very difficult team comp. In fact, with most Hyper Bloom teams, your typical strong buffers don't even add that much more damage to your team at the cost of survivability. Take for example this side by side in which I used the exact same Singcho Hyper Bloom team to fight Primo Geo Viship. Only that one team used a C6 Kazuha with Freedom Sworn and the other replaced Kazuha with Candace. As you can see, Candace's variant actually ended up defeating the Geo Bishop faster and has the benefit of significantly more survivability and even just more rotation flexibility. And Hyper Bloom teams are already very well known for their strength and budget friendliness, so having a variant in which you can enjoy so much comfort without sacrificing pretty much any of your offensive potential is very nice. Especially in the current Spiral Abyss where I can generally clear each chamber of floor 12 in 60 seconds or less using this team. It's also important to note that especially in teams where you're not specifically building around Singcho being the main Hydro DPS, because of his C2, if you have it, he's still going to enable every other teammate on your team since they're now all tied to Hydro Damage. This Hydro Damage will not only come from their normal attacks if you choose to weave those in between your swaps, but also the initial blast of Hydro Damage that Candace applies when swapping through each character. So for example, inside of a quick swap or a budget freeze teams, the damage output becomes a pretty even mix between Hydro and Cryo, allowing for some very interesting new builds and very fun new playstyles using these teams, and they're actually quite strong. In general, and to 
summarize my first takes on Candace and Singcho's synergies, I'd say it's not entirely unlike Singcho's synergy with Yelon, functionally speaking, because these two create a very versatile and flexible team core that can be used effectively for a number of different strategies, and they do so by bouncing off of one another's utility and enabling the entire team by doing so. Side note, that was not at all a Yelon comparison, I only mean that both of these duo combos function somewhat similarly. Anyways, the interesting yet slightly obvious thing is that Singcho's access to this new strategy with Candace opens up his gear building options by quite a bit. So in this next section, I'm gonna run through the best gear to use in what situations for Candace and for Singcho, starting with Singcho. Firstly, Emblem of Severed Fate has and will always probably be his best artifact set since he's so energy hungry and his burst accounts for so much of his damage output, and therefore you can still expect this to be Singcho's best set in his teams with Candace. However, thanks to the fact that he now has access to more sources of personal hydro damage, there are other sets that actually come closer to Emblem strength in certain teams. For example, Four Piece Gladiators can help to significantly boost his normal attack damage, and the two piece attack bonus is still nice for his burst. And the more you're able to weave in his normal attacks, the more valuable this set becomes. For similar reasons, Four Piece Heart of Depths is another set that becomes more competitive than it was, and it can even be slightly stronger than Four Piece Glads for the set bonuses it provides. But in general, with both of these sets, they will only be worthwhile and competitive with Four Piece Emblem under one main condition. If you're slotting Singcho in teams where his normal attack damage accounts for more of his total damage output than usual, which realistically would only be in fun and quirky teams like Singcho main DPS and whatnot, but there's still more considerable artifact sets than they once were. And as for your weapon options, any number of his general weapons work, such as Sacrificial Sword, if you have it at least R3, Favonius Sword, Festering Desire, all three of which are good at supplying Singcho with the energy recharge that he needs to stay optimal. And if your energy needs are already met, which becomes a relatively common case with Double Hydro Candice, you can actually run with more offensive weapon options, such as Jade Cutter, which happens to be his best in slot by quite a large margin when his energy is met, especially with Double Hydro Resonance. But Miss Splitter, Skyward Blade, Summit Shaper, Black Sword, etc, etc all work as offensive options, I, but I went more in depth with weapons in my Singcho guide if you're still curious about the best options for you though. As for Candace's build, your goal with these teams is essentially to fill out her energy threshold and then stack a bunch of HP substats for her abilities, which leaves quite a bit of room for buffing gear, and as such, you'll generally find the most value from a set such as Four Piece Noblesse for team-wide attack buffing. And while generally this can prove to be less valuable in teams where reaction damage is centerfold, Synchro's presence does add quite a bit of value to the attack bonus either way. Even so, you can instead opt to run Four Piece Instructors on Candice for team-wide elemental mastery buffing, which obviously is quite useless in things like Synchro Candice Freeze, but for Hyper Bloom teams, it's quite a nice boost to your Hyper Bloom damage. The only caveat with this set is that it will cost Candice stats since each artifact can only be leveled up to 16, and she generally quite enjoys HP and ER stacking. Not that this poses a huge issue though, since the trade-off does provide a crazy 120 EM to your Hyper Bloom carry. But as for her weapons, Candice simply enjoys HP or ER weapons, the best of which options being Black Tassel for HP or Favonius Lance for energy recharge, but again, many others can work. And while you can opt to run Singcho with Candice together for the purposes of making Candice your DPS unit, it is generally not worth doing so, because she wasn't at all designed to output high personal damage, so I'm gonna skip over offensive weapon options. Now, as for the best teams to slot this god duo into, there are quite a few that they can slot into for the purposes of comfort and practicality, but the one I really wanted to focus on in this video is what I am stupidly referring to as Kandingcho Hyperbloom. <laughs> I'm focusing on this one because personally speaking, it's the only one that we currently have access to that I think effectively makes use of Candace and Singcho's synergies to their fullest potential, whilst allowing for some absolutely insane damage per second. In this team, you're going to be slotting Candace and Singcho with an Electro unit and a Dendro unit in order to create a Hyper Bloom team, and your best options for the Electro unit are Raiden Shogun or Kuki Shinobu, and personally, I think that Kuki Shinobu works way better than Raiden in this team because of not only her insane practicality with Hyper Bloom, which Raiden also has, but also Kuki HP scaling, so she enjoys Hydro Resonance. And for the Dendro character, Dendro Traveler is more enjoyable than Kole because they can infuse with Hydro and their Dendro application lines up more comfortably with the team's rotations. So once you have Kuki and Dendro Traveler together with Candace and Singcho, the reason this team is so standout is because of, first and foremost, the insanely budget-friendly nature of the team, but also the multiple synergies that they have with one another. Candace and Singcho trigger Hydro Resonance, which not only allows Singcho more healing and Candace more damage, but it also allows Kuki to actually provide sufficient 
Ashen heals while she's building completely into Elemental Mastery, meaning she's a support and a powerful main reaction carry at the same time. Further than that though, Candice's ability to infuse everyone with Hydro and buff their normal attack damage allows for a considerable increase in Hydro damage for the team, especially when running Kuki as your Electro unit thanks to her fast animations. And as I showed earlier in a comparison, Hyper Bloom teams are so heavily focused on Hyper Bloom damage that there isn't much reason to instead opt for buffers like Kazuha and Bennett and so forth over Candice, making this a very budget friendly and powerful team for those who want to literally just turn their brain off and keyboard smash to clear the abyss in under 60 seconds. Ahem, like this. As you can see in that clip, Magu Kenki, a boss that a lot of people have trouble defeating in Spiral Abyss, was absolutely shredded by this team, and the only member of the team that even ended up without full HP was Kuki, and that's only because she takes her own HP to heal. So while yes, admittedly a lot of my God Duo videos focus on synergies that are special only because of giant damage increases, this still felt extremely relevant to talk about, especially as more and more players challenge the Spiral Abyss, casual or otherwise. Candice and Sincho's synergy allows for so much comfort without sacrificing damage in this Hyperbloom team style, and beyond that, once you've lined up their bursts, the team doesn't have any other crazy mechanical intensity, so you can freely rotate in whatever way best suits the situation. And I do want to mention Burgeon, because while I can't showcase it in a flashy and fun way, because I don't have the characters properly geared, Candace and Syncho Burgeon teams likely perform very similarly, because having good Hydro application prevents you from sabotaging your Burgeon reactions with Pyro application. So that's something to consider as well, but I don't know enough about it. But in general, there's so much value that you can squeeze out of budget friendly teams with Candice and Syncho, and while many of the ones I didn't mention in this video are mathematically weaker alternatives to stronger teams, they're still quite flexible and fun, and I will stand by the fact that Candice and Syncho create one of the strongest variants of pure Hyperbloom teams in the game. I say pure Hyperbloom because there are other Hyperbloom teams that you could argue are stronger, but those ones aren't strictly Hyperbloom damage and therefore require noticeably more investment to function. Anyways, if this video helped you in any way or you just like seeing Syncho and Candice content, please don't forget to like and consider subscribing because it would very much be appreciated. I'll see you around. Bye.